There is a, a saying that gets tossed around uh, sometimes. Uh, the saying is, happy wife, happy life. Uh, now, I don't think it gets tossed around quite as much as it used to, uh, simply because I think men are, you know, maybe a little bit smarter um, <laughs> than they used to be, and they know uh, not to, to say such things. And while this phrase may be used sometimes in a way that's kind of negative, uh, you know, um, if, uh, if my wife were happy, uh, then we would all be more happy kind of thing. Uh, you know, it, sometimes it's used in a negative way. I want to approach it as a positive saying for our time uh, together this morning. Wives are absolutely central and integral to the effectiveness of a household. So much so uh, that I think it could be said that if time and effort were spent on the joy and satisfaction of the wives in our families, life would be markedly improved all around. Wives do a lot. They do a lot. And, um, and focusing on the joy and satisfaction the happiness of the wives that are in our family, I think, uh, would be very beneficial for us. And so that's what I want us to, to think about this morning. God created Adam. God created Adam and admitted that it was not good for him to be alone. He admitted that it was not good for Adam to be alone. In fact, the word good is used multiple times in the beginning chapters of our Bibles, but the only time that it is used in a negative sense, not good, is when Adam was alone without Eve. The solution to making uh, God's creation very good was that Adam have a helper comparable to him, a wife. From the very beginning of our Bibles, we find that wives, women, are so important to how life works, to how effective things happen in our homes and in our, our cities, our towns, our country. Uh, it, is, it is so important. Their role is so important. In fact, I want us to take a few minutes to read uh, probably the most famous passage about wives, about women in the Bible. It's Proverbs 31. And I want you to see just how much is said about this woman. And in fact, honestly, it's kind of staggering. And to be honest, if I were a woman, it would make me nervous because there's no way that I would be doing everything that this woman does in Proverbs 31. But I want you to listen to what this text says. It's Proverbs 31, verses 10 through 31. Follow, just uh, if you want to get your Bibles out and follow along, or you can open up the Bible app uh, and, uh, and log into the Bible app and click on events and find our church there, and you can find all these passages there. But Proverbs 31, verses 10 through 31, listen to this. An excellent wife who can find. She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the ships of the merchant. She brings her food from afar. She rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and portions for her maidens. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She dresses herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hands to the distaff, and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hand to the poor. She reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household are clothed in scarlet. She makes bed coverings for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them. She delivers sashes to the merchant. Strength and dignity are her clothing. And she laughs at them. 
She laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household. She does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her works Praise her in the gates. Honestly, it's exhausting reading that. I mean, I, I, I just, I, I, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, everything that is listed there and all of the stuff that's happening in that passage. And I'm not saying that that is a blueprint for every woman. I'm not saying that needs to be the case. Uh, but I am saying that this is uh, the, the, the tremendous giftedness that God has blessed women He's blessed uh, women and particularly wives uh, in families with is this, this giftedness. And, and this is why in Proverbs 18.22 from our scripture reading this morning, this is why the Proverbs writer says this, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Friends, I don't know about you, But if I were a single dad, I'm just speaking for myself, I'm speaking for my family. If I were a single dad, there are a lot of things, a lot of things that wouldn't get done, that wouldn't be accomplished were it not for Kristen in our house. The amount of things that she does, the amount of work that she puts in every day, the amount of side things she has going on, all of this work, it is is so integral and so important. And I I mean, that is just, it's exhausting reading that, and it's exhausting thinking about all of that stuff that that the Proverbs writer says about this woman. And, and, and it's no wonder that the happiness, the joy, and the satisfaction of, of the wives uh, in our church and in, in the world, at the women in our lives, is so important because so much rests on them. Because they were the essential element to make God's creation very good. Very good. And when they weren't around, it was not good. You are essential and integral and important. And so when the Proverbs writer says in Proverbs 21, 9, it is better to live in a corner of the housetop than in a house shared with a quarrelsome wife. I don't think he's being denigrating to the wife. I think what he's saying is wives do so much and are so important that when their happiness, when their joy, when their satisfaction, when their health is compromised, it can spell bad things for the family, difficult things for the family. So today, I just want to take a couple minutes. I want to try and keep this short today. I want to take a couple minutes to talk about the key to happiness and satisfaction. I'm going to take a couple minutes to talk about the key to happiness and satisfaction. And we're going to go to a New Testament passage, Matthew chapter 5. I hope you'll grab your Bibles and turn over there um, with me to Matthew chapter 5. And I want us to notice that the key to happiness and satisfaction is knowing that in God's kingdom, you can and will truly have it. You can and will truly have it. Happiness in God's kingdom. I want us to spend some time in the first 10 verses of Matthew chapter 5. Uh, these are commonly known as the Beatitudes, um, but they are uh, really what they are are an announcement of good news. Now, this, this passage applies to happiness and satisfaction for, for anybody who is in God's kingdom. But I, specifically, I want to think about it in terms of, of the wives that we have here today, of the, the women that we have in our lives today. The key to happiness and satisfaction is knowing that in God's kingdom, you can and will truly have it. 
This is not, these, these beatitudes, these first ten verses of Matthew chapter 5, they are not an announce, they are not uh, a, a recipe for right living. They are an announcement of God's good news that in his kingdom, these people thrive. In his kingdom, these kinds of people are taken care of. In his kingdom, this is what happens. Blessing and happiness and satisfaction happens. In fact, uh, the, all of these verses, all of these beatitudes start with the word blessed. Okay? Now, we have uh, an interesting usage of this word in our world today. You want to think about that? We have an interesting usage in this world today. What do you all... Uh, what, what do we say here in the South? Bless your heart, okay? And uh, if you take a Northerner, they hear that, and they're like, what does that mean? What are you talking about? What, is, what does bless your heart mean? What, is that, what does that even mean? Um, and, uh, and, you know, we could spend some time talking about that, but the word bless is something that has changed over the years. Uh, but here in the... Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 10, this word blessed, it is the idea of supreme happiness and satisfaction. There's no other real word uh, that goes well with this in our English language, and so typically it's translated blessed. Uh, Some translations will say, happy are you. Um, Or some translations will say, good news, and then give the announcement of the rest of the verse. Uh, But basically, what this passage is, Matthew 5, 1 through 10, is an announcement of what life looks like in God's kingdom. In God's kingdom, this is what life looks like. So let's dive in. Matthew chapter 5, verse 1. Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain. And when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed or blessed, however you want to pronounce it. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I believe that what Jesus is doing here is he is proclaiming the difference between his kingdom and all the other kingdoms. What are the values of the kingdoms of the world? Think about this. And especially during this time, you know, talking about the first century, we're talking about 2,000 years ago. What are the values of the kingdoms of the world of that time? You think about Rome. What are the values of the kingdom of Rome of that time? Might makes right. Pax Romana, okay? Uh, The peace of Rome. Basically, it was believed that Rome, through its military might, through crushing everything with its military, that there would be peace and that there would be prosperity and there would be happiness. Basically, it was the idea that the, the, the idea was that uh, you obtain happiness and you obtain uh, satisfaction by getting as much as you can get, even if you have to take it from someone else. Might makes right. That's the way that things worked. That's the way things are today still. That's the way things are today still. And so Jesus is proclaiming, that's not the way things are in my kingdom. No, the people who are prosperous, the people who are blessed, the people who are happy, the people who are satisfied in my kingdom are these people. The people who are poor in spirit. The people who mourn. The people who are meek. The people who, rather than hungering and thirsting after every uh, whim and rich and after every physical thing, no, the people are blessed because they hunger and thirst after righteousness, what is right. Then he starts talking about these qualities of mercy and purity and peacemaking. And we live in a harsh world that says you don't don't get by by being merciful to people. 
You don't get by by being pure in heart. You get happiness by doing whatever you feel like doing, doing whatever you want to do. You don't have entertainment in life without drama. You got to have drama. You got to have excitement in your life. You got to have gossip. You got to, to, to be a dramatic person. You've got to do that. No. Jesus says, not in my kingdom. In my kingdom, the people who are blessed are the people who are peacemakers, who set aside drama, who end drama. So we have this, this, this text of Scripture that I, I think in, in the past what I've tried to do is, is, is to spiritualize this text or moralize this text and say uh, that if you want to be blessed, you got to do this. If you want to be blessed, you got to do that. And certainly there is some of that in here, but I think more accurately this text is saying this is what my kingdom looks like. These are the types of people that thrive in my kingdom. People who are, are downcast and downtrodden. The people who are hurting. The people who are struggling. The people who aren't going to, to reach out and, and take something that they want. and uh, The people who don't operate by might makes right. People who are kind and merciful. People who don't necessarily care about riches and glory. Those are the types of people that are going to thrive in my kingdom. And so, wives, I want to speak to you just for a couple minutes before we wrap things up. When you're feeling down and out, exhausted, quiet, drained, stressed, hurt, please know that you are in good hands in God's kingdom. And that he wants to comfort you and bless you beyond measure. That your pain and your hurt and your exhaustion, your uh, sense of being tired, that that has not gone overlooked, that that, that is, is recognized. And then in God's kingdom, you can be comforted and thrive. Wives, when you want things like supreme satisfaction and kindness and mercy, please know that those things are found right here in God's kingdom through wanting to do right and showing mercy to others. Wives, when it seems like you are being attacked by the enemy from within, bombarded by friction and conflict by those around you, And seeing hate and hurt from without, please know that you are God's child and a child of goodness and peace and victory. And you have that in God's kingdom. What I'm trying to say this morning, what I'm trying to say this morning is for those wives that have embraced the fact that they are so important to the working of our world, to the working of our families, to the working of our towns, to the working of our country, to the working of our world. I want you to know that the best place for you, where you will receive kindness and love and support, where you will receive hope and joy and satisfaction is in God's kingdom. The reason I know that is because he created you. He created you. He created your role. And he knows exactly how to take care of you. And so, wives, I want you to know that your happiness, your satisfaction, your joy, It's important. It's important because when you're drained, things stop working in our lives. When you're down and out, things stop working in our lives. And we need you. It's just as simple as that. We need you. I want you to know today as we conclude that your husband is not the only person that you have made a covenant with. 
Your husband is not the only person that you have made a covenant with. You've also, hopefully, made a covenant with God. And if you haven't ever made a covenant with God, if you haven't entered into an eternal relationship with God and accepted the terms of His salvation, I'd love to talk to you about that. But hopefully you have also made a covenant with God and the God who always keeps His promises. The God who always keeps His promises wants you to know these things. He wants you to know that you have a place in His kingdom. He wants you to know that He will comfort you, according to Matthew chapter 5. He wants you to know that you will receive an inheritance that has been promised to you as His child. He wants you to be satisfied. He wants you to receive mercy. He wants you to one day see Him and continue a relationship with Him for eternity. He wants you to know that you are His child that you are his daughter. He wants you to understand that you already have a place in his kingdom. The tools are here. And the blessings are here. And I want you to know that God wants you to be blessed, wives. He wants you, I want you to know that God wants to comfort you and love you and take care of you. And that God appreciates and knows everything that you do. I want to end today by blessing the wives here today. Uh, and then we're going to sing an invitation song. If you need to, the prayers of the church, if you need to talk to someone, you can respond to that invitation. I want to finish with this blessing. That is a blessing that has been given for thousands of years um, by God's people. I want to finish with this. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. And the Lord give you peace. If you need something today, whatever it is that we can help you with, we'd love to do that for you today. Won't you please come as we stand and as we sing?